Welcome back to The Average Kitchen. Today we are gonna review the Instapot, I believe it's called the 10-in-1 Pro. I'm just gonna put it out there, there is a huge dent in this product. Uh, we've had this actually for a little bit, waiting to review it, but, but anyway, it's there, there's nothing we can do about it. The pressure cooker, today we're gonna do uh, this basmati rice, we're gonna do some homemade butter chicken, and we are gonna do sloppy joes, and we're gonna do some cheesy baked rigatoni. So that's our video, that's what we're gonna be shooting today. All right, so a cup and a half of rinsed basmati rice, a cup and a half of warm water, a teaspoon of salt, we get our lid on. All right, so we're gonna go pressure cook, custom, high, we're gonna go down to five minutes and hit start. Make sure that our pressure setting is on seal and we're gonna naturally allow that pressure to release which is gonna take about 10 minutes. So in the meantime, we're gonna let this build up pressure and we're gonna see how our rice uh, turns out in probably about 15 minutes. So as you will see, and Jamie will probably zoom in here, well, we just clicked on 11 minutes. After the five minutes, it switched to keep warm and the instructions uh, showed to naturally let the steam release for 10 minutes. So we waited, you can see it counted up. So now we're gonna flip, flip it to vent and release whatever steam is left, which is none, okay? So now we're gonna open up our lid. Put this aside so we don't burn ourselves. And let's have a look at our rice. Ooh, it's quite nice actually, very nice. Let me grab a spoon. Very, very nice rice, I'm impressed. Jamie and I were already dreading clean, cleaning um, this because unfortunately we've done rice in pressure cookers before and it does leave a, resi a, a residue behind. Now I went extra rinse on this rice because I've been chirped before by some of our loyal fans of uh, not pre-rinsing rice, which apparently is a huge no-no. So I'm gonna get this pot out, get it cooled down, we're gonna give it a rinse, and then we're gonna get our butter chicken going. All right, we're back, we did some prep work here. I'm gonna lay out what I have going for you. I got some yellow onion chopped up, a can of diced tomato, half a cup of uh, chicken broth, two good size boneless skinless chicken breasts, tablespoon of uh, crushed minced ginger, a good sized tablespoon of yellow curry powder, and I'm gonna throw in four tablespoons of butter. So again, following the app, going through, says preheat the uh, pot to saute, so you can see that that's preheating. You can see the status bar here. Uh, I have it on a, on a medium saute setting, so I can already feel it's starting to get warm, but it's not quite there yet. And once we're up to temp, it uh, suggests or tells you to throw in your crushed tomatoes, your chicken broth, your onion, butter, curry powder, ginger, and salt. So let's just give this a second to, oh, it's starting to get pretty warm here. So I'm gonna to start to do that now. I'm gonna throw in our tomatoes. It is pretty warm, obviously. Our chicken broth. We'll do our onion, curry powder, and we'll do our four tablespoons of butter. So they do suggest to um, saute this for roughly two minutes or until uh, all the butter is melted. I think the butter is a good measuring stick to how far um, along your saute is coming. I was quite surprised that they did not suggest putting in um, the onion first to get them sauteed, but I'm gonna follow the instructions as they suggest. So some salt, they don't suggest pepper, but I mean, I love pepper, so I'm gonna throw in some pepper. After just saying that I'm gonna follow the instructions, but give that a stir. I'm gonna grab a different spoon here, but uh, I'll clean up my workstation here a little bit and uh, let that start to heat up and then we'll come back and um, add our chicken. All right, all my butter's melted. It's actually smelling really nice. Jamie, what do you think? Yeah. He likes it. Jamie was saying, actually, Jamie is a fan Huge fan of the Ninja Speedy all-in-one cooker, whatever. But Jamie did make a comment that this definitely seems like it's a pretty easy meal, 
with a lot of ingredients that you would normally have at home. Often when you follow recipes, you buy these abstract ingredients or abstract spices that maybe you would never use before. This is all pretty much stuff you would have at home or at least here in North America. All right, so we got our two good sized chicken breasts. I'm gonna throw one in, throw the other in. I'm gonna give my hands a wash and then I'm gonna come and make sure that those are coated and stirred in. All right, so our next step suggests or tells us to put our pressure cooker on high for 15 minutes. And after 15 minutes, we're gonna carefully release the pressure. So I often struggle with these lids. Let's see how we do. Not bad. So pressure cook, high, 15 minutes, start. As easy as that, make sure your pressure is set to seal not to vent slash release. All right, as you can see, our time is up and I just flicked our switch over to vent. So it also has a venting uh, status bar here. As you can see, it's slashing one out of three. That's kind of interesting. I know you can't smell it from home, but you can really smell the flavors that we've developed here. It smells fantastic. We'll let that vent continue to relieve our pressure. We're gonna pop that lid off. We're gonna pull our chicken out and we're gonna flick it back to saute and get that mixture uh, warmed up again. And then we're gonna stir in a half a cup of heavy cream that will help thicken up our sauce and give it uh, some density. And for fun, we're gonna throw a meat probe in our chicken breast just to see what temperature inter internally that chicken got to during that cook. So let me clarify one thing. I thought this was a venting status. Uh, Try to read it with the light angle and upside down. It actually says keep warm. So venting, keep warm, basically the same. There's a little pin that dropped down which then tells us that the lid is safe to open. So our good sized chicken breasts are not as big as they were, but that's okay. So we're gonna get these out. They have a nice color to them though. Get those out and let's turn this uh, off. Turn it back on. We're gonna switch over to saute. And we're gonna hit, hit start and get that starting to heat up. In the meantime, let's throw a probe in our chicken just for fun to see what our internal temperature is. You can never be too safe with chicken. So more than cooked, 212 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius. So normally chicken target is uh, in the 165 range, so, uh, but it definitely feels tender. So this one's actually the same thing, 213. So no concern here about uh, undercooked chicken, that's for sure. So we're starting to get uh, some boil going here. And I'm gonna grab a spatula because uh, heavy cream tends to stick to the walls of the um, measuring cups. So we wanna make sure we get it all. We'll give that a stir. Changes our color a little bit. Hopefully it'll thicken up our sauce. All right, so I just turned off our sauce. I wouldn't say it thickened by any means. Well, as it cools down, it may thicken a little bit. You could also, if you wanted a thicker sauce, to make a slurry. And um, a slurry basically is cornstarch. Equals parts cornstarch to um, cold water in a small dish. And sometimes you have to kind of stir it hard because it wants to clump together. Um, so if you put in two tablespoons of cornstarch, two tablespoons of cold water, stir that up and pour that into any sauce, it will thicken it very well. All right, so let's dish some of our sauce out here. We'll put it on some of that rice that we made earlier. And let's uh, try it out. So the chicken's super fall apart tender, like really, really nice. This doesn't look like a traditional butter chicken like I've had before, but um, we'll see how it tastes. It's extremely, extremely good. The rice is fantastic. The sauce is great. Like I said, I probably would have liked it a little bit thicker. There's, it's, there's not an overwhelming flavor of spices because all we did was add in ginger and uh, curry, but the chicken is immaculate. It's super, super tender. It's a really easy all-in-one meal to make. I'm impressed. Let us get this all cleaned up and we'll get ready for our next one, the baked rigatoni. Okay, so very unique sequence of operations on this recipe. Uh, I've never seen this before. They say, add your chicken broth to the pot, don't stir it. Add your cream to the pot, don't stir it. Garlic, salt, pepper, don't stir it. Put in your noodles, don't stir it. Just make sure they're covered. And then you do the pressure cooker. So we're gonna follow the instructions as they say, layering in these products without stirring them. So chicken broth, heavy cream, garlic, salt and pepper. 
ziti, in this case, rigatoni. So we're gonna throw our lid on. I just noticed, see this line, Jamie? Imagine. Okay, so we're gonna go to pressure cook on high. I said six minutes, right, Jamie? Start. Okay, so once our pasta is done, we are going to release the pressure, put in our pasta sauce, a ton of cheese, and then we're just gonna close the lid to let the cheese melt and garnish with spinach. So we'll be back when our pasta is done. All right, so our cook time's done. I'm checking the app. It's showing uh, release the pressure, which we're doing, and then stir in the pasta sauce and stir in. We've got a pretty heavy amount of grated parm and grated mozzarella. And because the um, reservoir is already hot, what they suggest is stir in your pasta sauce, dump in all your cheese, and just throw the lid back on for three minutes to give your cheese time to melt. So we're gonna do that. And then they say to garnish with spinach. All right, let's pop our lid off and have a look. So it certainly smells good. Give that a little stir. All right, let's get our sauce in. They just say like a pasta sauce. So you can really use any kind of sauce that you want. This one here is a uh, Costco like organic marinara sauce. It's actually fantastic as a base, like if you wanted to build on that. All right, so now we've got a huge volume of cheese, like cheese for days. Uh, give it another three minutes, we'll pop that out and we'll give it a try. All right, as you can see, I brought in a couple taste testers. Uh, they're gonna give the pasta a try because they are pasta monsters. Jamie, if you can get a close up please of this Beautiful looking, can you guys see that? Oh, guys. Yeah, it definitely looks hot. Now they suggest to garnish with fresh spinach. Do you guys want garnished fresh spinach or just, I didn't think so. Mm. Really good. good one, Caden. He's our messy one. Really good. Jamie? So yeah, pastas, I agree with Jamie, al dente, maybe it could have been done a little bit longer. Turned out fantastic. So the next thing we're gonna do is some Sloppy Joes. And some more Sloppy Joes. <laughs> I made them extra sloppy for you. <laughs> okay, as you can see here, we got a lot going on. We got a pound of ground beef, yellow pepper, onion, carrots, quarter cup brown sugar, a cup of marinara sauce, two tablespoons sriracha, two tablespoons rice wine vinegar, a heaping tablespoon of minced garlic, which is about the equivalent of a couple uh, cloves chopped up, and two tablespoons of soy sauce. We have our uh, Insta on sear, medium. We added some two tablespoons of uh, avocado oil into here. Now we're gonna throw in our ground beef and start to sear slash saute that. Roughly cook it for eight minutes to make sure it's cooked through and then we're gonna start adding our veg. So bear with us, we'll get that cooked up. Okay, so our meat's basically browned and now we're gonna start adding in all of our veg. So we've got some yellow onion, we've got two carrots that I carefully cut and consistently cut the same size so they would cook evenly and throughout. Then we've got a bell pepper and then our garlic. And they suggest cooking this for roughly four minutes. So we'll let that sit, and then we're gonna add the rest of our ingredients, and then it's gonna pressure cook for 20 minutes. We've got all our ingredients in. She stirred up nice. As Jamie and I were joking, these aren't your mom's sloppy joes. These seem to be uh, the next level sloppy joes, but both of us joke that I haven't had a sloppy joe probably since I was nine. Uh, Jamie, you probably would be in and around the same um, time frame. So hi. 20 minutes. Start. All right, so cook's done. We're relieving the pressure. Got some real standard hamburger buns that I uh, gave a light toast to, as well as I have some homemade bread and butter pickles. So we're gonna uh, make a couple sloppy joes and try them out. Not gonna lie, the presentation slash color of it is to me is just okay, but they are sloppy joes, I guess. They look sloppy. They look sloppy. All right, so. <clears throat> one for Jamie, one for me. All right, I guess I don't even need a plate. 
So I'm just gonna try it. Super hot. Super hot. Crap, that's hot. <laughs> I could try it again. Take two here. The pickles had a really nice sweet balance to it. I'm trying to think what I can compare this to. It's good though. I mean, it tastes good. Jamie and I were a little lost for words on the Sloppy Joes. So essentially, it's, it's almost like a goulash, as Jamie mentioned, or like the starting of a chili or starting of a spaghetti sauce. It's not like traditional, like how I remember Sloppy Joe's, uh, but what is a Sloppy Joe? I don't know, but the flavor profile was good and it cooked it really, really well. Like the vegetables were cooked perfectly. The meat was really, really well flavored. So it was really, really good. So let's talk about this product overall of our thoughts. If you're a fan of the channel, you know that we rate products based on uh, six criteria. So price point, $200 Canadian. Tax in is what it costs. Uh, so maybe it's, I think it's $125 US roughly. Uh, so we gave that a 7.8. Uh, functionality, we gave it a nine. It, it, it worked extremely well. It was very easy to use. Sometimes it's tough when I have to reach across and because I'm not looking at it, but um, it has these favorite settings. I don't really know what those are, uh, but it's slow cook, sous vide, yogurt, bake, slow cook, um, sear saute, steam, rice, pressure cook, so it does all kinds of different things. So it is very, very versatile. Uh, or sorry, the, fu the functionality was, we gave a nine. Versatility, we gave 8.8 .8, uh, as a result of all of those different options. Cleaning was an 8.1. Um, essentially, the only thing you're cleaning is the pot. The rice is a bit of a pain to clean. Cheese from the pasta is a bit of a pain to clean. The size of it, we gave it a 7.5. It is, as you can see here, probably maybe, Jamie, it is a five quart five quart pot, so that's a pretty good size. And the quality we gave it an eight. Little disappointing with this dent, no idea how it happened in shipping or whatever, but it's damaged, uh, so no fault of, I guess, the product, but it was obviously somewhat easily damaged. So overall, out of 10, the average kitchen gives us an 8.2, which is actually a really, really good score. I'm really starting to like these products. We previously did a review on the instant, I keep, I keep on calling it Insta, instant indoor grill with the see-through glass. And I use that product actually all the time. It's fantastic. Really, really, really like that product. Air fries extremely well, indoor grill extremely good. So we actually just on one of our breaks ordered a bunch of new instant products that we're gonna shoot future videos on. If you have any ideas of what you'd like us to review, leave a comment and always leave us um, where the country that you're from. I'm a world traveler. I just got back this week from Italy and Croatia. Uh, I love world travel, international travel, cuisine. So if you're from abroad or even if you're from Canada, let us know where you're from. We'd love to hear from you. That's our video. We hope you liked it. If you want to help us out and support us, please subscribe. It's the best way to help us out. We'll see you on the next one.